All right, guys, it's about that time. It's about that time of year. Things start to get colder, and it's time to swap out these summer tires for our winter tires. Uh, and in doing so, uh, my car was flagged for service bulletin for the full self-driving computer. That's right. That's the Hardware 3 computer. Um, I purchased full self-driving a while ago, and it looks like they're starting to do the retrofits now. We're going to jump in the car, take it over to service, and check it out and see what this Hardware 3 is all about do some light testing, some initial impressions to see what it's like. Coming right up. guys so they're working on kit retrofitting him with the full self-driving computer and in the meantime they've got me in a loner which is an old 75d or classic 75d and i get a little bit of nostalgia here being able to see autopilot one in action here after a while uh, the same renderings of cars and trucks etc uh, the wider lane markings it is still very solid still very usable as an autopilot system but it's also interesting to see the change and evolution of autopilot 2 2.5 and hopefully now beyond with the new full self-driving computer but people who bought older cars can still get the benefits of autopilot in its core nature not some of the more advanced things so for instance i can't just use the quick turn stalk to change the lane i have to actually go the full press of the turn stalk now in this uh this older autopilot one car and then release, it doesn't automatically turn off. Oh, and just our favorite place to test out the merging lanes, and again, how Autopilot One handles it. Very well, straight line, no moving, no even indicating that it was gonna try to merge into that line or try to center you in between that. So again, that's still the advantage for Autopilot One. All right, guys, just wrapped up with the completion of the retrofit for Hardware 3. I'm now officially rocking the full self-driving hardware, also known as the Tesla full self-driving computer or hardware three. Now, as a result of doing this process, they had to reload this, the firmware as well as uh, reload basically the camera calibration. So now I have to go through the camera calibration process uh, all over again as if I got a new car so it can calibrate and accommodate itself to the new full self-driving computer. Um, and then we'll be able to do some testing to see exactly what that looks like. I'm not sure. I probably have like about 50 miles before I have to, uh, before the calibration takes into place. So I'm not going to bore you all with that. So I'll drive a little bit. And when it comes back on, we'll resume. Uh, if not uh, a little bit later on, maybe tomorrow with uh, some updates and some testing on this. All right. Stay tuned. Calibration is almost complete for the surround cameras. And once it's done, we should be able to jump in and test a little bit of the autopilot and see how it compares to the previous uh, hardware 2.5 computer. All right, looks like the calibration is now complete. So navigating autopilot and autopilot uh, are restored. Now, since I've just gotten this computer in, I did not check to see if I have to manage the settings accordingly or if the, the settings have persisted. Uh, some of the settings on the screen, as you, you can't see right now, but some of the settings on the screen still said the cameras are calibrating, but I'm going to go ahead and engage just regular autopilot to see what that looks like. Nothing visually different here. Uh, I'm just really looking for the feel of it to see if it feels the same, if it feels any different, feels more confident, things like that, just my initial impressions. Uh, we're in pretty, pretty dense traffic right now, so I probably won't get to see too much. A little bit of jumping car action there, as you saw on the screen. I'm not seeing any difference in terms of the draw distance for the rendering, being able to see cars further out, nor am I able to see any type of additional cars being rendered in additional lanes. Again, uh, a little bit of jumping around right now could be just for the initial calibration. 
but there is some jumping around a bit, but mostly it's all smooth. Mostly it's all smooth. Also some intersection right here between the car in front of me and myself. That was very odd. I've never seen that before. So this seems to be new. And so what, what again I'm looking for is just the differences between this and uh, the previous autopilot version. Now it disabled completely, which is not fun. Uh, cruise disabled, so maybe a malfunction perhaps. I will hit my error, cruise was disabled. So that's not cool, but it's real. We'll try again later. We'll try again once this message clears and see what it does. All right, so we're back now, finally. Had to revisit the service center so they can load us up with some new software. Seems like they had a bad software install that caused the glitchiness that you saw before. Cars intersecting, sensors going off, crews being disabled, things like that. Um, and now with the refreshed software install, now it's all good. All right, and so again, nothing different. Just looking for the feel of what uh, this update has to bring in terms of how autopilot feels and it feels very familiar. Nothing different, nothing new, doesn't do anything better so far. Uh, we will try some more edge cases, scenarios where Autopilot 2 failed and see if Hardware 3 can now pick up the slack and do the things that uh, Hardware 2 could not. In terms of visualizations, everything is the same. A little bit of you know uh, glitching in and out. No spinning cars, but just glitching in and out specifically for the rear camera, but that could have always been, been the case. Uh, but it now shows uh, traffic cones as well with the new latest and greatest software update. Shows traffic cones, and I'll demonstrate them on this exit right here where we have a construction zone happening in full effect, and there should be tons of cones. And it does it from a pretty good distance as well. Pretty good distance. Now, we're in, I guess, uh, challenging conditions for autopilot where the sun is sort of setting in its field of view for the cameras, and it does a pretty good job. Now, notice I say try, uh, construction cones, not these. Whatever these are, these big drums, if you will, it doesn't quite recognize them as drums. They rend it renders them, but it doesn't actually show them as what they are. It just shows them as traffic cones. Uh, but it is pretty cool to see some colors other than blue, white, uh, white if you will, and red on the uh, instrument cluster. So orange is definitely something of interest. So it does recognize different types of traffic cones, small ones, tall ones, as well as these drum-like cones. Let's see if you guys can see that again, the lighting is not great, but I hope you can see that. So that's pretty much it. Nothing else really different. Doesn't render wider lane lines or things of that nature, but it definitely shows these cones as we come to a light and it even draws a little bit further out. So these are representative of the ones that are further up here and it renders them accordingly. So that's pretty cool. All right, the cones are in place. If the cones were to flip over, it would show that. If the cones are staggered in a certain way, it'll render that accurately as well. So that's also very nice. Does not show cross traffic now. So as the cars are passing by going this way, it's not rendering them as such here, but it is showing us cones as cars obstruct its view of the camera. So as you see the cones are blipping in and out, as we start to zoom in, that's just representative of that an object is blocking it, and then when it's unblocked, it shows it. Shows the person going across, again, still facing forward, not facing to the side like it should, but it still recognizes the person, so that's great. Overall, it's, 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 I'm happy we actually got the update. We are in group one. Uh, it's going to start to roll out based on your group, and I guess your group is based on when you got your car or when you purchased for self-driving. I'm not sure, but we're in group one, so we got it immediately in the service bulletin. So check with your local service center, see if your bulletin has come up or your group has been called, and see if you have uh, you know, the, 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 the bulletin to get your full self-driving computer in place. And let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you think about it, if you feel any differences, if you notice any stretches of road. Uh, that are different than ones that you've driven before. Uh, and let's chat about it in the comments. Until next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.